Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. My name is Fatima Abdul Adir Aden. I come from Marsabit. And thank you, thank you, thank you. For the first time, I'm sitting in a forum where in Kenya, I normally say I'm from Kenya too. Yes, I'm from Kenya too, <laughs> because I'm always being asked, are you Somali? Are you Ethiopian? I'm never Kenyan. And even today morning as I came in here, I was asked to step out of the car. All the Kenyans were just allowed in. It's things that we go through every day. I'm different. I'm proud to be different. I'm very, I play football. Whoa. <laughs> I am an advocate of the high court. I dropped my law degree to go and play football in Marsabit because every other time the young people carry AK-47 and we are busy slaughtering each other. The rest of Kenya is busy building itself. Half of Kenya today is dying, corpses. We expect it to register and vote. How do you expect us to vote when we are dying? It's the corpses. Do you accept the corpses to rise and vote in August? I don't know. This is a question not to you, but to the rest of Kenyans. And I still don't feel Kenyan enough, because maybe one day I'll be deported to Somalia. Maybe one day I'll be deported to Ethiopia, and I think my brother Kumsa will take me home, <laughs> gladly. <laughs> Listening to you and looking at the pictures, Turkana, the green Turkana, I always tell people, Marsabit is green and misty, and everyone says, no, it's dry. I don't want to go there. I have five questions. Five? Five. <laughs> I'll try to summarize. It's, I think I'm the only one from Marsabit. I, I don't see anybody from Northern Kenya. The really? Mustard, really? Mustard is from Mustard, yes. <laughs> We're very rare. We don't yeah. even make it here. Yeah. <laughs> My first question is, how do we link the good practices you mentioned to policies? Because there is a huge, huge gap. I have worked for 14 years in Marsabit. My dad thought I was crazy. He invested in my education. <laughs> the first lawyer, Warana female lawyer from Marsala, and then I come back to play football. He was so disappointed. <laughs> Little did he know, 10 years down the line, I will be recognized by FIFA for using shoot to score, not to kill, wow. and featured in a film. <laughs> Thank you, and featured in a film which I don't think Kenyans know because I'm not even considered Kenyan, called The Soldiers of Peace, that narrated by Michael, Michael Douglas, wow. alongside Desmond Tutu. And Kenyans don't even know I exist. Thank you to you today. You mentioned Marsabit, you mentioned Moyale, you mentioned Mandera, and the mortality rate. We haven't had teachers for so many years, so for so many years now since the Mandera attacks. Do we care as Kenyans? When half of Kenya kids are in school, we are expected to pass the Mantiangi exams with no teachers in class. How do we bridge this inequality? That is my next question. How do, do we bridge these inequalities between Kenya 1 and Kenya 2? Half of Kenya is forgotten, and I say forgotten. You are standing here and talking so positive. I wanted to change the picture that was in the media, the first lady giving us, you know, one leg of meat to a woman in Marsabit. How would she feel if she's the one who was receiving that meat? And for how long will we be on the other side receiving end? I'm just tired of being poor. I'm tired of being fed with relief. I know I can't be resilient. I know I can't be re resilient. I need people to hold my hand, make investment in building resilient communities. Don't give us relief. I'm tired. I don't want it. We don't need it. Invest in Northern Kenya. And I promise you, we will not shame you. We will achieve the SDGs with your support and with the communities in Northern Kenya because we are built to bounce back and we are resilient. And this is a message to the Kenyan. Kenyans, watch this space. If the South will not wake up, the North will lead. And this is my promise to you. I will walk with you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mukhtar, I'm looking at you. <laughs> I'm sorry, if I have to share this. What you say? We share a brother. And his brother was arrested in Marsabit. Okay. Accused of being a terrorist. Mukhtar's brother. Mukhtar's brother married his sister is married to my brother. <laughs> We've never met. I took to social media. I took his ID because it, Mukta, he, was, he had an ugly name when no one thought there will be a Somali in Marsabit. This is the plight of the young people in Northern Kenya today. They're being arrested, they're just disappearing. How do you expect us to have hope in Kenya? Why will I not come and blow this up? If no one cares, I can't even get an ID. This young man has worked so hard. He has a safari home business, Empesa, and because he's doing so well, then it's suspicious to Kenyans. How can you do well? 
in Marsabit and be a Somali. We fought so hard. We tracked the vehicles that came for him. 16 vehicles armored, surely. Do we need that? And you're telling me to have hope in Kenya? Can I? <laughs> Can I? It's hard. I won't lie to you, it's hard. Maybe we need to tell each other the truth. For as long as you treat me as the other, it will be hard for me to trust you. You need to hold my hand. Or either, let me go to Somalia. At least we have a new president, although I can't even speak one word of Somali. Maybe he will see some hope in me. But I believe in Kenya. That's why I don't want to give up. But I don't want to be in Nairobi. Because this doesn't feel like home. That's why I decided to go back home to Marsabi. Imagine if all of us went back to our villages and did something. Kenya will rise. And it can only rise if those of us who are carrying folders and walking around in Nairobi looking for jobs go back home and do something. This is a challenge to you, the young people. <laughs> finally, finally, oh. I'm bringing 10 women from Marsabi to come and play football on 5th of March for the SDG. These are women who've never killed, kicked a ball, but they have worked so hard that those villages today are resilient. They didn't have tap water. Today we have running water in those villages. They didn't have food. They had Red Cross books. If you don't have it, even, you know, your son will not marry a daughter <laughs> if he's not in the Red Cross register. Today, 152 villages have returned Red Cross books. And what do I mean by Red Cross? Well, Kenyans will not know. Those are the relief books. That is for maize and bees rationing every month. We don't need the rations. Invest in northern Kenya. And rest assured, we will rise. And just like the sun, can you stop it from rising every morning? You cannot stop northern Kenya. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs>